Just want to take a moment to introduce myself. I'm Ansley Sutter, the Social Media Training and Communications Coordinator with Front Media Solutions. We're going to talk about brand you marketing and how you can create a winning social strategy marketing yourself or your business. Once again, if I haven't met you, I'm Ansley Sutter, the Social Media Training and Communications Coordinator with Front Media Solutions. Appreciate you taking the time out and joining me today. Welcome to the first FRMS chat of 2014. It's crazy to believe that this past year, 2013, has just flown by and we are up and running with a brand new set of social media trainings webinars for you and we're so excited about 2014 we're going to have a lot of more integration with you know talking about different things within the social space we're going to tap into the real estate space as well uh, we can borrow things from the real estate space as well as they could borrow things from the multifamily space so we're excited about our trainings for 2014 most of you are kicking off the new year with a new look and a new marketing strategy, right? So it seemed only fitting to cover best practices to help you get there for this year, 2014. Before we get started, we are using the hashtag FRMS chat on Twitter. We are monitoring Twitter. I have Twitter running. We have some of our FR social experts in the background checking Twitter as we speak. So if you have any feedback, any questions, maybe you have some insight, feel free to use the hashtag. And one person using our hashtag today on our Twitter chat will receive a $20 gift card. That's right, folks. Big old 20 bucks. You can do a lot with $20, trust me. Um, so feel free to join our Twitter chat. We are expecting you. We're excited to have you, and we will be on the lookout for those people who are interacting with us on Twitter. We'll announce the winner at the end of the webinar, so you can just sit back, relax, and tweet your little heart out. Okay, so you can't have an effective strategy, an effective strategy without knowing why you need to have one, right? So we'll start off with talking about why branding matters. Then we'll move to discussion on where a consumer may interact with your brand. Then we'll switch gears and talk a little bit about how to best position yourself as a brand to maximize on exposure and leave a lasting impression, which is always the key. Then we'll close today's FRMS chat with some branding do's and don'ts, which are always helpful when creating your own branding guidelines. At the end of our session, we will share a few valuable links that you can leave with, so be on the lookout for those. Then we will wrap things up with some Q&A that you know, we didn't answer along the way. Um, we, like I said, we have one of our for rent social media experts on the Twitter chat as well as I'm monitoring the Twitter chat. You know, I feel like an octopus. My hands are all over the place today. And for those of you who are not on Twitter, don't worry. We'll be sending you a follow-up email with the links from today's Twitter chat and from today's webinar. So let's just jump right in, shall we? Let's start with why. Why does branding matter to a social strategy? Now, here's the deal. You only have one shot at catching an apartment or a home shopper's attention. And during that small, small, tiny window of opportunity, you have no choice but to make a great first impression if you want to land the client, if you want to close the sale. So it's important to know that closing the deal doesn't always happen at the paperwork stage. I mean, it's happened way before. It happens once you've gained your customer's trust, and that's usually from the gate. So you only get that one chance to make a first impression. So you're thinking, okay, I can schmooze and win them over in person. But if you think about it, most of the initial point of contact with a consumer to a brand happens online more than in person these days. So branding yourself or your business is almost a little bit like dating if you think about it. You are expected to put your best self forward to appeal to the sea of you know eligible singles out there and most of us have been on a great first date and most of us on the other hand have been on dates that we wouldn't even wish upon our worst enemy, right? When a home or apartment shopper is looking for a place to live, a huge purchase decision, a large part of that purchase decision is based on the, on the impression that you're putting off. So it's all about positive vibes. It's all about 
being in this space and not <laughs> leaving this kind of impression on your resident or your prospect or your home shopper or home renter. So it's really important that you translate the importance of leaving a lasting impression in person to leaving a lasting impression online because that's where most of inquiries and, and people that are going to interact with your brand, point of contact is number one going to be online before it's in person or even before they make a phone call. In dating situations, personality and communication leads to love, right? It's a no-brainer. We've been taught that ever since we were little. A relationship starts with an, inner, an attraction to someone's personality. It's, it's the saying, you know, they've got brains. You're really attracted to their personality. You're attracted to their thoughts. You kind of vibe with them. And then a physical trait or, you know, their beauty comes into play as well. And these sentiments are enriched through conversation and through communication. Now, Brands work almost the same way. So wrap your mind around, if you can wrap your mind around the whole love concept, which, you know, everyone's still working on that. But consumers connect to a brand through a combination of the brand voice, visual social media, and the story a brand tells. It's all about storytelling these days. Brands need to develop personalities just like people do. So when a shoe shopper connects to, for example, Tom's Shoes, you know, everyone knows has a pair of Tom's these days, they're not just connecting to the footwear. They've connected to the story that the Tom's Shoes brand tells. Otherwise, who would pay close to $60 for a piece of canvas? I know I wouldn't, but I stand behind what Tom's and all these other brands that have a story that they're telling through their product, that's what we buy into as consumers. That's what gives us that ability to be able to trust that brand. So there are brands out there that take absolutely no prisoners when it comes to a marketing and social strategy. And just like them, you have that multi-million dollar asset to safeguard and protect. So ask yourself, am I playing to win or am I just playing to stay in the game? You should have the mindset where, you know, in 2014, I'm not taking, I'm taking no prisoners, I'm in it to win it, and I'm going to really, you know, boost my vacant, boost, um, you know, my occupancy rate, I'm going to retain as many residents as I can, and I'm going to do it through my social strategy and through my marketing strategy. So another important question to ask yourself is, as a brand, as a property manager, as a real estate agent, as a broker, am I leaving a mark? If you're not so sure, you can go to the drawing board. But that's, that's all about leaving a brand impression is at the, at the end of the day. Let's say, let's say, for example, you know, you have a resident or a prospect or, you know, if you're on the real estate side, you have an, you have a home potential home buyer that comes into your office or makes that phone call or sends you an email saying, you know, I want to check out this, this property or this apartment community and say that they leave not, say that they leave not signing a lease. Listen, do not, do not forget about that person. It's not about closing the sale initially. It's about making an impression because more than likely that person, that prospect is going to sit there and think about that for up to, you know, who knows how long. But the fact that you left that lasting impression is what is, what is going to bring them to come back and sign that lease or buy that home. Leaving a lasting impression is helping you work smarter, not harder. So you're not racking your brain trying to close the cell within 24 hours. You're giving them some time. You're giving them some breathing room. And you're letting that impression work for you. Also, reevaluate your marketing roadmap to find the midpoint between your goals and your renters or your buyers or your sellers' needs. Again, we're speaking to both multifamily and real estate today. So everyone's up for grabs, but we can take and, and adopt things from both industries. And at the end of the day, we're still selling a product or a service, right? So reevaluate your marketing roadmap and try to find a middle spot, a happy medium between your initial goals and your consumers' needs. 
From there, you can decide what marketing avenue is going to help you leave that brand impression in the minds of your audience. Is it going to be online advertising, or is it going to be SEO? Or maybe you could establish yourself on the big player social channels like Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest. If so, if you want to do any of those things, we've got your back. Front Media Solutions can help you do completely all of that and more with our diverse media mix. So you'll see at the bottom of each slide, the middle of your screen, there's a link that you can actually type into your browser to get more information on how you can get the ball rolling and stay on top this year with the, the diverse marketing media mix that we offer you as one of our clients. So now that we've discussed why branding matters, let's go over all the places a consumer may interact with your brand. It's all about engagement and point of contact marketing. Let's start off with words. Think about all the places, all the places your branding lives, right? It's on the web, in print. It's on print collateral. It's maybe on your blog if you have one. You might have YouTube videos or FR video if you're using for Media Solutions to help you with that. You may have created a, a, a property newsletter. Uh, maybe you have some certain type of packaging that you send out as follow-up, thank you cards or something like that. So you may have custom stationery. You may have a, you know, a custom email signature when you shoot an email to someone who's come into your office. I could go on and on because we as marketers have learned how to place branding in almost everything. Go to a trade show, see how many tchotchkes you can get, and you'll be so surprised as to, wow, I never thought I could have branding on earbuds or a towel or even flip-flops. Yes, we marketers are very, very crafty as far as <laughs> placing our marketing places, you know, in, in almost every type of piece of collateral. So this is, why word, this is why words are so important. And images are the first thing. Words and images are the first thing that catches our attention online. And since social media is becoming increasingly visual, most brands are finding ways to integrate their name, their logo, and their tagline into one visual like you see here for these examples. So let me share with you, if you don't have a tagline, don't panic. It's perfectly okay. Not everyone needs a tagline. And the tagline is just a small part in branding. Sure, it's great. But what's more important is images. How many people see your logo? It's living on your website, but is it in your profile picture on your Facebook business page? Is it living on your social handles like on Pinterest or Instagram or Twitter? By the way, Twitter, I want to see those people using hashtag FRMS chat. Let's get it going, folks. Not only is your logo important, but any image you create and share has to reflect brand you because it's going to and it's supposed to be driving your advertising and marketing. What you see on the screen here is an example of a property management company that I like to use quite often just because they are stellar at social media. Ram Partners refresh their images in the social space quite often, but their brand ID stays intact because the brand colors and fonts and logos carry across each change. Your cover photo is your opportunity to capture someone's attention. What you see here is Ram and at the beginning of December, you know, it was holiday season, so they had the, the cute idea to kind of dim out the background and let the presents do the talking, but guess what? The presents are their color green. Just one month later, they said, you know what, we're ready for 2014, let's, let's change our cover photo and add, you know, just the new year, but brand it to our color. So guys, it's as simple as that. You can use free programs like PicMonkey, like Rona Designs. We've talked about all these apps that are completely free to you in the social space to help you brand any of your image assets that will be shared in the social space. Like I said, your 
your cover photo on Facebook, I always like to tell people it's like your visual handshake, right? It's, it's your virtual handshake. It's that first impression that someone gets with your brand. So your cover photo is what is going to grab someone's attention, and the posts and the status updates that you share on your Facebook timeline is the content that's meant to keep that attention. So you know what? Let your visuals do the talking. We're to always about easyology, the easy factor. Work smarter, not harder at Print Media Solutions. And we're trying to pass these type of ideas on to you as a customer because when your job is easier, our job is easier, and everyone is happy, right? Branding also matters in online interactions. You know, how are you coming across in your tweets or your Facebook posts? Are you garnering Instagram contests or comments, I'm sorry, or LinkedIn connections? Are people sharing your content? These are all important questions that you really need to think about. And here's a great visual by Byte Launch that shows you how brands can get better interactions. So let's go over them one by one. First, learn to say less because less is more. If it were only that easy, you know, we as marketers, always feel like we have to just talk and talk and talk a client or a prospect into saying yes. But guess what? If we took a step back and just let our product or our service or our brand, our reputation do the talking, we would probably land that sell even faster than we would if we talked their head off or if we tried to convince them because you come across as too pushy, right? So let yourself learn to say less because less is more. Be intentional and be calculated. Number two, be intentional and be calculated in what you say when speaking on behalf of a brand because we've all seen those brands that share or tweet something that the audience has taken completely out of context, right? We never meant for the train to derail, but it has, and things can go rogue really fast. So think, plan, and talk. These are all things that if you're more calculated and you're more intentional in your marketing, you'll see how effective that can be. Number three, listen first. Listen twice as much as you speak. Social listening is a game changer for brands that take the time to study and observe the likes and dislikes of consumers. Take a step back and listen and watch and learn and you'll be so surprised as to how much data you collect when you just take a step back and do and, and, and engage in social listening you will have collected so much more information than you would otherwise number four don't give people the opportunity to jump on their soapbox on your social channels on your Facebook page or on your Twitter timeline this is almost like shooting yourself in the foot open-ended questions, you know, like what we do is, if, you, if you've ever visited For Rent's Facebook page or our, our B2C Facebook page, you'll see that we ask questions. That's perfectly fine. But we give people a call to action. We give them a choice to make. So we say, you know, if you'd rather live in San Antonio or Denver, and we show them two different properties, which, which would you prefer, A or B? So keep it in a box. Don't ask something like state your opinions because you know what? That giving that open invitation can backfire very, very quickly. And it's hard to stop the train once that train gets going. Number five, don't be boring. As simple as it's as simple as taking a few minutes to search for relevant content to share with your audience. So this is something that these five steps on how to work on your social interactions are just very simple, but a lot of times we as marketers are moving, moving, moving. We don't think about how we can work smarter, not harder, and how we can inject this easy factor into our marketing strategy. Speaking of interactions, five to 10 years ago, I would have said that in-person interactions take precedence, and maybe they did. But now, 
while in-person interactions are still vital. I mean, at the end of the day, you still have that meet, to meet that person. Let's be real. We're not quite to the place where someone can sign a lease and get their keys to their property or their apartment without coming into contact with another human. We're just not there yet. But we're close. We're not far from that, which is why 84% of shoppers use online search to help solidify a purchase. So just know that at the very beginning, people will interact with your brand online, but it's still up to you that when time comes for them to come into your office or come to the closing table if they're closing on a home or sign that lease, that you are good to go and you are going to maintain that brand impression that warm and fuzzy feeling that they initially got online. So knowing that you have that small, what we talked about, that small window of time to impress and capture that person perusing your site for a place to live is important and can help you grasp the concept of branding yourself and branding your business. Just know that, again, people are online for hours a day. I mean, you know, we are in front of a computer screen or a smart device or, you know, when we get home from work, we're watching TV, but we're also on our iPad or on our smartphone. So we're always second screening from the time we wake up to the time we go to sleep. But the fact still remains that even though consumers are online for an exorbitant amount of time, you as a marketer still have that small window of opportunity to gain their trust and, and impress them with that initial virtual handshake that you as a marketer are in charge of delivering. So the last place branding matters, we talked about words, we talked about all those other things, uh, interactions, we talked about images. The last place branding matters is the user experience. The first time an apartment or home shopper comes to your website, what experience are you offering? Think about it for a second. If your website, is your website clean and easy to navigate? Can people maneuver through it easily? Is it optimized for mobile devices? So if someone is coming across your brand online and they Google you and they come to your website, is it clunky on a smart device? That's something you might have to talk to your developers about at the corporate level. Is branding consistent from your site to your social channels? All of these things play a role in driving retention and conversions as well as boosting brand to property to resident connection and engagement. So this is all, all of these things play into delivering a great digital experience for people that come across and interact with your brand. I'm seeing some good stuff on Twitter. I like it. Keep it coming, folks. I'm loving what I'm seeing. So. We've talked about why branding matters and where it matters, right? So let's move on to our final section and talk about how to position yourself to reflect your best qualities. So in short, successful brand positioning allows for the audience to automatically connect to the brand instantaneously, setting that brand apart from its competitors. First, position your brand in a way that allows your audience to easily understand you. When a consumer connects with the brand, that person begins to value that product or service and identify with the brand leading to consumer buy-in or ownership. So it's like a pyramid effect. It's like the base is, listen, we just want you to understand us as a brand, so let's try to make it easy for you. Again, work smarter, not harder. Easyology, the easy effect. Let's help our consumers understand us. Once they understand us, maybe they'll value what we do a little bit more. You know, you, you can walk around all day kicking dirt because you don't understand why people don't, under, don't value the product or service you deliver. You know that it's great. You know that it's serving, saving them time, saving them money. You know that your property is one of the best properties to live within the metro area of your city. You know that your, your housing community or that house that you're selling is the best priced house on the market. But why can't any of my consumers, why can't my resident or prospect or home buyer or renter understand that? Well, maybe, or value that, maybe because they, because they don't understand you as a brand or understand the full 
idea of who you are as a brand. So help them get to that initial stage and then the rest will follow. It's like build it and they will come. Once they understand you, they'll value you. Once they value you, they'll begin to identify with and take on those more humanized traits. And then once they feel like they're emotionally connected to your brand, they're going to take on brand ownership and really be a stakeholder in your brand. And the realization that the product or service is offering can fill a void for them is going to lead to brand loyalty. So put them up in a position where they understand you and then once they understand that you offer value to their life and they can identify with that, fill that void for them. Offer them that service that no one else can offer because that is what is going to help them own and buy into what you are promoting. So what better example than Starbucks to explain how brand positioning wins consumers, right? When you think of Starbucks, you don't think of the burnt tasting coffee in the break room, right? Because we all drink it, let's be real. <laughs> we get that desperate sometimes where, you know, a cup of coffee in the break room is a cup of coffee. But guess what? Starbucks makes the same kind of coffee, but why are they so different than the, than the break room coffee? This is because, because Starbucks tells a story through its branding. Listen, coffee is coffee is coffee, right? The caffeine level is all we're trying to get to, but we're, go we're going to surpass that free break room coffee, and we will walk outside of our building and, and walk and sometimes run to the nearest Starbucks and pay upwards of 5 or $6 for a venti vanilla latte because why? We're, we're loyal to the brand. Starbucks conveys a certain lifestyle that the brand has found, and they've found a way to appeal to almost every demographic. So when you hold that, that, that token Starbucks cup in your hand, it means something. You're saying something about yourself, and you're saying something about why you're loyal to that brand. When you hear the term brand positioning, think of six P's. Maybe it'll help you understand it a little bit better. Six P's are place, product, people, promotion, process, and persona. All of these things make up brand positioning. So make sure that when you are establishing a marketing strategy, whether you're in the position where you're tweaking your marketing strategy or your social strategy, or you're creating one from scratch, right? You need to be touching all of these six P's in order to, in order to be successfully positioned um, against your competitors. This is a great quote that just drives the point home, and it says, positioning is about finding a niche in the prospect's mind. It's filling it with the one thing that sticks. Let's read it again. Positioning is about finding a, ni a niche or niche, however you want to pronounce it, in the prospect's mind and filling it with one thing that sticks. One thing. That's all it takes to differentiate yourself from your comps, from your competitors. What is that one thing you've done to stick out to your prospect? Or what's that one thing you've done to make your home buyer think, you know what, I'm going to go with this agent or I'm going to go with this brokerage because they do that one thing that I'm not going to get from anywhere else. Think about it. Maybe you don't have that one thing yet, but maybe this is something that's going to help you come up with that one thing that's going to take you to the next level in 2014. So these are some brand positioning questions that you can ask yourself. Number one is, what do you want your brand to be known for among your target audience? Listen, you're not the only one doing what you're doing, okay? That's just the whole idea of America or capitalism. We all do the same thing, but it's kind of the different things that differentiate us that help us get a little bit higher or put us lower than, than our other competitor. So if you can, if you can own or you know, find yourself in a specific space or offer a specific benefit to your consumer, you've hit the brand positioning jackpot. That's really your key.
to help you say, listen, we've got this because we do something completely different than anyone else does and they can't touch what we do. Another question you should ask yourself, what can I deliver that competitors cannot do as well or at all? Think about that. Like we said earlier, are you playing the marketing game to win or are you playing the marketing game just to, just to be in the game? What can I deliver that my comps cannot do at all or as well as I do? This is where your niche and, and the basis of a strong brand position is going to play, come into play. Listen, like I said, you're not the only one doing what you're doing. Try to find that thing, even if it's as simple as having freshly baked cookies whenever someone comes into your office. Do you know how many people are hungry throughout the day? And do you know how good freshly baked cookies smell? I mean, listen, it has nothing to do with apartment with, with apartments, right? But the fact of the matter is that you are the one paying paying attention to the small details, and you are the one that's going to stick out in, in that prospect's mind after they are tired and they've spent all day touring different communities. You're the one with the cookies. Simple as that. Third question to ask yourself, does your desired brand position match your overall company goals and vision? Confusion is a brand's worst enemy. Make sure that your overall company goals and your vision is it, are aligned. That's going to help you come across more clearly to your residents and your prospects, okay? So it's vital to recognize the need of your audience so that you can create that niche or no other brand can fill. Your promise or your set of brand standards is what is going to satisfy those needs. And your brand's personality is what is going to differentiate you. So the way you're positioned is what is going to place you in an entirely different playing field over your competitor. So just make sure that you know where the need is, that you are delivering on that promise, that you are coming through, your brand's personality is coming through your marketing efforts, that you are positioned in a way that your competitors are slipping and falling to get even up, to, up close to where you are. Okay, so let's close today's chat, FRMS chat. With a brand, with a few branding do's and don'ts. It can't be said enough that branding should be consistent both online and in hand. Your brand is represented in every every single marketing avenue, so make sure it's recognizable and it's consistent. So inject consistency throughout your marketing. When it comes to online branding, we've already touched on the use of images and social media, but branding is also about, and it's important all the way down to the language and the tone of voice that you're using as your brand. Up at For Rent Media Solutions, we use one uniform font across any online or print collateral. We also stick to a set, a set suite of Pantone and RBG colors throughout our branding, which I'm sure you've picked up on. You'll see a lot of blue in our presentations and in our branding. Blue, gray, white, all that kind of stuff is something that really differentiates our brand from others. You can call it being nitpicky, like I just mentioned, the fact that we use a certain set of uh, fonts or the the fact that we use a set, certain set of a color scheme. Call it nitpicky, call it type A, but when you have inconsistent branding, you lose the opportunity to engage with your audience because they're so busy trying to figure out who you are. This leads to indifference. This leads to the element, element of meh, they're so-so. I could, you know, take it or leave it. That's not the type of brand impression that you want to be leaving. That's not the type of taste that you want to be leaving in your, in your consumers' mouths. Another don't of, of creating brand you is don't be so self-serving on your social networks. We've all come across those brands that almost shove their product down your throat right? And it's so unpleasant. It's so unpleasant. 
Instead, share info that's valuable, like ways to decorate a new living space on a dime. Because when you add value, you gain the type of audience who will add longevity to your brand. You don't want those type of, you don't want, you want quality consumers and you want a quality audience over quantity. It's not about numbers anymore. It's about who actually is buying into your brand. Another do is offer, do offer more than a product. It, this is another great example of adding value with relevant information. So what you see here are, is these are some Facebook snippets that RAM um, and Tivoli Apartments shared during times when the weather kind of may have posed a threat to residents. So, you know, this just says, please take extra precaution this evening. Much of the northern eastern parts of the U.S. are under record-setting temperatures. Please do the following. Leave your heat on and let your faucets drip. Okay, so let's just take a step back. Not only is this offering more than a product, this is conveying that we actually care about our residents and our prospects and our staff. This is also helping RAM work smarter, not harder, because guess what? By issuing this freeze warning and, and sh giving them these directions, guess what the maintenance man is not going to have to do the next day? He's not going to go, he's not going to have to go to each property or, or each unit and fix the pipes because guess what? They shared the, this tip with their residents and prospects. So that's, that's a great example of injecting easy and easyology into your marketing strategy. Same with Tivoli. They did the same thing. They kind of shared a link to what, what uh, cl school closings are and, and, and businesses had been closed for that time. So again, offer more than a product. This is something that you probably saw online yourself when you were checking for the weather. Feel free to share it on your business page's Facebook page and sh share that value and that information to others rather than just keeping it to yourself. So when your brand receives criticism or otherwise, negative comments over social media, it, it may be tempting to filter these out in order to control the content that, that others will see. So it may be just super easy to just click that delete button. No one saw it. It never happened. <laughs> but this is not going to go over well with your audience. They want to know that their voice is being heard, no matter how ridiculous it sounds. Instead of getting rid of offending comments, unless they're just completely like, you know, threatening someone's uh, life or anything like that, well, from there you'd probably report them to police. But do your best to listen to them. Understand why that commenter feels the way they do and take it offline. You could easily reach out to that person via Facebook message or prompt them, you know, comment under that comment and say, we, we hear you feel free to send us a message um, and we can take it from there. And that way you're taking that not offline but behind the scenes and that's going to help you safeguard your brand. Just like Starbucks and other brands out there, Turn a simple product or service into a lifestyle. Trust me, if Starbucks can create a movement out of coffee, you can too. <laughs> this is an example of Ram sharing a board of their smart partners, which is a group of brands who offer discounts to residents who reside at any of the properties under Ram's portfolio. So this is just one of Ram's properties, Highland Terrace, that shared just a, the logo of Stella and Dot. Most of you ladies out there are familiar with Stella and Dot. It's a great jeweler uh, that you can order this great jewelry from. And residents get 10% off of any order. In addition to the 10% off, they get monthly specials. This is something that you're not going to get elsewhere, right? Find things that will differentiate yourself and offer a lifestyle as opposed to just apartments. Like I said before, confusion kills brand loyalty. Never try to get one over on your residents or your buyers. If they sniff you out, 
trust me, they're more than likely going to share that negative experience on a review site. So don't mislead your audience. You will definitely pay for it in the end. Just like people go to the gym and the salon to update their looks, brands refresh their identity to stay relevant as well. And this is going to help connect visually as well as help you maintain that positioning against your competitors. So, you know, every now and then, talk, take it up with corporate if, if they're iffy about you changing images around. Refresh your brand, find your position, and manage your reputation. Don't forget to refresh your image. This is something that is going to help you stay relevant throughout the years. Be a brand that evolves with time. Coca-Cola and Pepsi are two brands that have evolved with time to keep them relevant in the marketing space. You see from 1886 to today, Coca-Cola has completely changed its logo and so has Pepsi. Pepsi was, you can't even read what Pepsi was before. <laughs> and whatever your preference is on Pepsi versus Coke, I prefer Coke. Uh, you know, the fact of the matter is that these brands were smart and savvy enough to know how to evolve with the time while maintaining their, their core brand positioning and brand identity. Additionally, these brands that you see here have streamlined their looks to appeal to their changing and evolving audiences. So for most of you, I know that's something we've talked about. You have to, if you want to change your look, you probably have to take it up with corporate. And they would probably execute something like that. But sometimes the decision makers may be more removed from your audience than you are. So it's really up to you to kind of share share with them what the forecast is like out there in the social space because they may be not even, you know, honed into that. So it's up to you to share with them, you know, if it's a good move to make. Another do is provide a call to action. We've talked about the impact a call to action can have on your marketing efforts. It's as simple as telling your audience to subscribe to your newsletter or opt in to your text to resident program or your text to prospect program that you're using with Ferrant Media Solutions. Make sure you have calls to action placed throughout your marketing collateral to drive clicks back to your website, clicks back to, you know, your Facebook page, any place that you want to drive traffic, make sure you link to that in your calls to action. Call to action that you see right in front of you is at the bottom middle of the screen. To di discover a diverse media mix, please visit bit.ly FRMS Discover. That's a call to action right there. Very subtle. It's not in your face. It's not shoving a product down your throat. You have the choice, and, but we bring the attention to you on that. Encouraging someone to like your status update, or better yet, like your brand page on Facebook is the ultimate call to action. The majority of consumers are currently on Facebook, so why not engage with them using a call to action, like like this post if, or comment if, or share if. Those are all great lead-ins and calls to action to get more engagement on your Facebook page. So all of the things we cover today are meant to help you not only better your business and work smarter, not harder, and inject the easy factor into your marketing, but also better yourself as a marketer to stand out above your competitors. It's all about differentiating yourself. So in a sea of competitors, how do you stand out? Or how do you swim up to the top and, and get caught by your consumer? That's what you really need to think about. Whether you work at a huge property management company or you're at a brokerage or maybe you're a smaller property, everyone has that brand ambassador living deep down inside and hopefully today's FRMS chat has allowed you to tap into that.
So right now I'm going to quickly share some valuable links that apply today's, to today's topic. And any of you on GoToMeeting, I can actually chat those with you right now, so just hang tight. Okay, so I've sent those to you. But we've tweeted most of these during today's session. If you didn't get those, that's no problem. We will send these in our follow-up. We're recording this webinar, so we'll send those in our follow-up recording and e-blast to you. And you'll get those all via email if you attended today's webinar. Um, so make sure that you go to, you open that email so that you can get all of these helpful links. The first one is we've created a social media channel consistency, consistency checklist. Say that four times fast. This is going to help you check off each area within the social network to make sure that your logo, your cover photo, even a small blurb about your business, all of that is going to be uh, consistent across the board. Second one is a blog post, creating the right call to action. You may not even have your mind wrapped around what a call to action is. That's no problem. We have a call to action blog post for you to read. Last one is, this is your year for easy marketing. And while we're taking questions, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Feel free to ask them on Twitter. I can get to those after the chat. Or feel free to ask them using GoToWebinar. Um, as, as any questions come in, I'm happy to answer those. But really quickly, I just want to, before we announce today's FRMS chat winner, I want to share that most for most people, Ringing in the new year means making plans to eat better or spend less or travel more, maybe just trying something new. Well, at Forent Media Solutions, FRMS, we know that for you marketers, ringing in the new year means it's time to start planning for leasing season. It's right around the corner, and the easier the better, right? So FRMS has taken the easyology philosophy to the next level with useful tools and application ideas, which are going to help increase effectiveness of your marketing efforts and ultimately drive more leads to you. So this progression is also known as the easy effect. In the new year, FRMS is excited to bring you even more tools and resources that will help you prepare for leasing season and it makes and make it easier for renters and to discover your community. These resources will come from helpful tips, come in the form of helpful tips, success stories, and insightful research to accompany the diverse suite of products available to you. So to jumpstart your year for easy marketing, we want you to subscribe to our Your Solutions blog. So it's simply bit.ly YS subscribe. That's B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash Y-S subscribe, capital Y, capital S, lowercase, subscribe. That way you can see all the newest blog posts that we post there that you can repurpose for your marketing efforts. So at this point, <laughs> I am happy to announce today's winner. Today's winner is N210SS, number, letter N, 210 SS. So we appreciate you. Let me see if I can find you on Twitter. Yes, you are on our Twitter chat. Thank you so much for joining us. If you are still there, feel free to DM us your information so we can pop your gift card in the mail. And congrats on the Twitter chat today. You are a great participant. We appreciate your participation. So to close things out today, I really appreciate all who joined us. We hope you feel confident in creating a social strategy that injects your brand's personality, brand you, into your social strategy. So before you go, make sure that you like us on our social channels. We absolutely love interacting with you. And that being said, welcome to 2014. Thank you so much for joining me on our first FRMS chat of the year. And have a great day, everyone. Take care.